In Apollo 11, man's first landing on the moon, there was no objective more important to science than the collection and return of samples of the lunar surface. For never before had we had the opportunity to examine extraterrestrial material from a positively known location and context. Fortunately, at the site of the landing in the southwestern part of the Sea of Tranquility, there was a considerable variety of lunar material, much of it debris from nearby impact craters. At first, in case of a contingency, samples were chosen and collected rather rapidly. Later, as operations continued to proceed smoothly, samples were chosen and collected more deliberately. Within five days after the samples were picked up on the lunar surface, where they had lain for millions of years, they were delivered to the Lunar Receiving Laboratory at the Manned Spacecraft Center, Houston, Texas. The importance of the event was underscored by the presence of top NASA administrative officials. Inside special vacuum chambers and nitrogen-filled cabinets, decontamination measures were taken and the containers were opened. Samples were examined, described, photographed, and weighed. They were then prepared for preliminary physical and chemical analysis. Meanwhile, a number of Earth organisms were exposed to lunar material to assure that there were no pathological hazards. Among the organisms were plants, such as conifer seedlings, and tobacco tissue cultures. Invertebrate animals such as insects and shrimp and the almost microscopic paramecia and vertebrate animals such as the Japanese quail. And germ-free mice. In an intensive series of biological tests over a number of weeks, there have been no indications of pathological effects among any of the organisms. As preliminary investigations continued under the direction of a number of scientists from academic institutions and government agencies, it became apparent that four general types of lunar materials had been collected. There was the lunar soil itself, composed of a variety of glasses mixed with crystal and angular rock fragments. There were fine-grained crystalline volcanic rocks characterized by minerals whose crystalline faces reflected in light. And by bubbles or vesicles which formed when the rocks were molten. There were somewhat coarser grain volcanic rocks marked by irregular cavities or vugs which formed when the rocks were partly molten. Common to both types of volcanic rocks were the whitish mineral, which is known as plagioclase feldspar, the darker one, which is clinopyroxene, and the blackish one, which is ilmenite, or an iron titanium oxide. Finally, there were the brexias, comprising fragments of volcanic rock in a matrix of lunar soil. These were formed by impact hardening. Like all the rocks, the brexias are pockmarked by pits formed by the impact of particles traveling at high velocity. In the scientists' preliminary studies of the lunar samples in the Lunar Receiving Laboratory, there were several significant findings. For instance, all the rocks are similar chemically, which points toward a family relationship. Although the components were known, the proportions are strange, suggesting either formative processes unknown to us on Earth or an unfamiliar bulk composition for the moon. The soil and brexias contain large amounts of noble gases, that is, gases which do not combine readily in chemical reactions. Most of the gases were derived from the solar wind. In most of the rocks, there is evidence of shock. There is evidence of both lava flows and impact. Strangely, the brexias are far more magnetic than the volcanic rocks, the very material from which they were derived. The sandblasted appearance of the rocks indicates an erosion process about which there are major questions at present. There was no evidence that surface water had ever been present at the landing site.
Neither was there evidence of any biological material. Perhaps the most interesting discovery was that the volcanic rocks are at least three billion years of age, dating back as far or perhaps further than the oldest rocks ever discovered on Earth. It would seem that if the lunar samples of the Apollo 11 landing do not themselves take us back to the origin of the moon, then certainly rocks from other regions will. While the preliminary investigations produced new discoveries, they also led to a more intelligent distribution of the lunar material to the international team of 142 scientists who will conduct detailed investigations. Among those present when the first samples were distributed were Dr. Daniel Anderson, Lunar Receiving Laboratory Curator, Manned Spacecraft Center, and Dr. Paul Gast, Columbia University, Dr. Stuart Agrell, Cambridge University in England, Dr. Kurt Fredrickson, Smithsonian Institution, Dr. Dieter Heyman, Rice University, in their work, the scientists will study in detail such things as formative processes, physical properties, bulk chemistry, and the relative abundances of elements in primordial matter. From their studies and discoveries, basic new knowledge and understanding will emerge, and basic new questions, the beginning of what one investigator has called a new science.